Is this the Pro V1 killer? So I've managed to get my hands on the brand new PXG golf ball, which actually proved to be quite a difficult thing as a retailer. PXG aren't giving these to retailers, they're only doing it direct to consumer through their website here in the UK. I've managed to get my hands on some and I'm gonna compare them to the brand new 2023 Titleist Pro V1. They're claiming that they're just as good as the Pro V. Now the first thing to do is the official bounce test. Now it feels quite hard and clicky at first glance. Pro V1, just that little bit softer. Just, but is that really an official test? So I've just set a green up at 50 yards and I'm just gonna hit some 50 yard pitch shots. Now I said in a previous video, I'm trying to hit my pitch shots and keep that club aiming at my belt at this point. PXG ball. Not bad, not bad. Now that didn't feel as hard as I thought it would. It kind of came off the sweet spot quite nicely. Not too brick-like when you're actually hitting a shot. Not the best on direction. So I'm landing these about 40 yards and they're just rolling up to sort of pin high. That was a little bit thin, so that will spin a bit more and land shorter. More like it. Straight the pin. Stops fairly quick. 7,300 on that shot. Four shots averaging 42 yards carry and 6,800 spin. So let's just do the same sort of cluster of shots with a Titleist Pro V1 and see how it compares. That was heavy. Next to the pin. Next to the pin again. You could say I'm a little bit more dialed into the shot, but 42 carry, 7,200 spin. 42 carry, 6,800 spin. 45 carry, 7,000 spin. So a few warm up shots from 50 yards. The Pro V1 has one yard more carry for me on those shots, negligible, and 200 revs more spin. 200 revs is very, very minimal again. So on the 50 yard pitch shot, I'm calling it a draw. Right, full shots. My favorite yardage with this club, 56 degree, is 110 yards. And let's see how they compare on spin from there. Yeah, I'm not noticing that hard clickiness of the ball when you're actually striking it. Seems to be all right. 111 carry. I'm alternating between the balls here. So this is the Pro V1, then PXG, vice versa. Pro V1. 111 carry again. Donk, just left of the pin. PXG Extreme. One oh six, just short and right. Pro V1, 113, 10,600 spin, and PXG Extreme, 106 carry, 11,500 spin. Full shots, not really feeling much difference in compression or softness. They feel pretty similar. And Pro V1, 110 yards. A little bit higher, but 112, 10 and a half thousand spin on the line, line ball. So the PXG ball averaged 108 yards with just under 11,400 spin. And the Pro V averaged 112 yards, so four yards more with 10,600 spin. So the spin has dropped with the Pro V, which has given it a little bit more distance, slightly shorter with the PXG, but more spin, almost 800 revs more. Although the PXG ranged from 106 to 111 and the Pro V1 ranged from 111 to 113. So on a very small pool of data, uh, tighter dispersion. Now bear in mind I've only hit three full shots and a few partial shots with each brand new golf ball. I've got slight marks here on the Pro V, a little bit of cutting there and I think this PXG, can you see that extra chewiness on the golf ball? Now for durability that's not very good, however that could be why it's spinning that much more in terms of data because that cover is quite soft. Now one of my favourite tests for how soft the cover
cover is on a golf ball is when I get two fresh balls out the pack and rub them against each other, I can feel how grippy those materials are on one another. If you've just eaten a packet of crisps and you get a bit of grease on here, you're not gonna get that. So make sure they're fresh out the box and then rubbing together. If I now do that with two brand new PXG golf balls, they do stick quite a lot. There is a lot of friction there. And if you imagine that friction on the, on the wedge face, that could be why we've got 800 revs more spin because that is very impressively sticky. Right, because of those blemishes on that golf ball on the PXG one, I've got brand new balls out the sleeve again, and I'm gonna hit some seven irons. So I'm gonna hit two balls at a time, and I'm gonna hit six shots with each golf ball. So here's two with the PXG. Now that wasn't the best contact on the ball. I've hit it a little bit heavy and pulled it. So hopefully I'll get one of those strikes on the Pro V to be fair. That has missed the green. Go on, get on the surface. This is squeezy fade. Not so squeezy, but it's a little fade. 6,800 spin and 172 carry. Next to the pin. All right, let's go for the Pro V1. Ah, high draw. My natural shot is a high draw, so that shot does sneak into my game. 183 carry with 5,500 spin. A little bit less draw, 5,700, 183 carry. Let's see if I can get a couple of swings like that on the PXG ball. It's more relative. High draw, coming into the pin, 6,400 spin. Ordinarily, I wouldn't get enough spin with this iron. I'd be looking to change the shaft or do something different to increase the spin into the green because I'm not quite reaching my target spin rate. And the PXG has jumped straight into the spin rate I'm looking for with an iron. So the golf ball is a very valuable part of a fitting process. Make sure you're getting tested with the ball that you play with. Ideally, I choose a golf ball for the whole year and I'll stick to that ball for the whole year because it helps me dial into my numbers a little bit more consistently on the golf course. Uh, drop kick, drop kick left, 165, 5000 spin. I'm going to hit a couple more with the PXG. I'm just going to get some good contacts on it. By and large, those problem shots are not the fault of the golf ball. But uh, six and a half thousand again. When I actually put a decent swing on it, it's around that six and a half thousand area, which is actually quite welcome. There's a lower flight straight at the pin, 6480 again. Pretty consistently around the six and a half thousand area when I actually make contact with the club face. Back to the Pro V1. More relative shot, 5400. And I think in other reviews I've been looking at, that we've seen more spin with the wedges and the irons in the PXG golf ball. So I'm actually quite looking forward to see what it does with the driver for me, because I don't want the spin to be too high with the driver. So it's trying to get a ball that works with everything in the bag, because we do have 14 clubs to manage. A little bit toey, which is gonna give it a bit of draw. 5,400 spin. Okay, PXG ball. 5,500 spin. 6,500. So the spin is a little bit relative to the strike that I'm putting on the ball, but generally speaking, the PXG is spinning that little bit more. All right, a couple of Pro Vs. 5,700, 179 carry. 5,584, 180. Now I hit a couple of extra balls with the PXG because they have a couple of missed strikes, but I didn't get the Pro V spinning over 6,000 at any point. And I've got five shots with the PXG over 6,000. So there is definitely more spin on an iron. So on this small test, I found the PXG ball to be five yards shorter with about 850 revs of spin more than the Pro V. So shorter, more spin. Pro V one slightly longer, slightly less spin. So everyone's gonna have a different spectrum of what they need. If you don't get enough spin, the PXG is going to help. If you get too much spin, the Pro V1 is going to help between these two golf balls. Don't forget there are a lot of golf balls in the market, very heavily saturated. So my driver is the Cleveland Launcher XL, nice and big forgiving head. I've got it on the nine degree setting with a Ventus Black 6X. I like this shaft because it keeps the spin down. So for me, if I get one of these golf balls spinning too much, I'm going to lose efficiency in the air. I need to keep that ball knuckled down.
down to get my longest drives. I'm gonna hit one ball at a time, alternating. Okay, let's call ball A the PXG. I'm gonna try and hit a high draw on purpose. Whether that happens, I do not know yet. High draw, 1800 spin, 285 carry, 160 ball speed. For 308. All right, let's try and replicate the same shot with the Pro V. Feels pretty similar. High draw, similar flight. 2000 spin, but 292 carry with 164 ball speed. Up to 317. Now this is why I'm alternating the balls because I don't want to get one warmer than another. PXG. That felt pretty good. Ah, oh, high right, didn't get the draw. 162 ball speed. Pro V1. Oh, 298 carry with 1800 spin. That's getting up there. 323 and the same sort of shape as the one before. Let's see if I can get anywhere near that with the PXG ball. Fast. 166 ball speeds, 290 carry. Less draw, more spin. The 309. Pro V1. Bit ducky and toey. PXG. 162 ball speeds. Pro V1. PXG, Pro V, PXG, oh that's fast, Pro V, oh push that, push, one more shot with each ball and I'm going to do a bit of a silly swing where I'm chasing maximum ball speed. Bin, 169. Same again, Pro V1. One six eight. Not on any fairway though. So I can get them up to the same sort of level of ball speed. Now I have seen more shots over 310 with the Pro V1. I haven't seen anything go over 310 with the PXG. There is a difference in the maximum potential, I think, between these golf balls. We've got an average of two, just under two and a half thousand spin with the PXG ball, which I think is why it can't quite get over that 310 barrier. The average spin on the Pro V1 is 1800, which is quite a lot less, which means the ball travels through the air and cuts through better. However, the PXG's average distance is 304. The Pro V1's average is 308. There's four yards in it. Now for the price of these golf balls, they're not far apart. So it's up to you whether you can take the information from here and make a decision on what you purchase. I think try the PXG's and see how you get on with them. If you like them, you like them. Obviously you can't go through a retailer. You've got to go straight to the website in the UK. Ball speed wise, I had 163.1 average with the PXG and with the Pro V1, 164.3. So not 0.8 mile an hour faster with the Pro V. Not really that far different. The main thing here throughout the whole thing is the extra spin you get with the PXG ball. Very good with the wedges, very good with the irons. With the driver, it's not quite the same story. If you get fitted to your driver with the PXG golf ball, you might be able to get that extra performance with the wedges and irons and actually get a driver that flies in the right way with the driver because there's more things you can change. Loft, shaft, how you deliver the club to the ball. I could probably get that spin down. If I was using that in on the golf course, I'd work it out. But at face value, with my current fitted driver, it's spinning too much. And the PXG launch angle is one degree higher, 0.8 degrees higher, which is a consistent thing I've seen on other channels, where it just pops up that little bit more off the face. Carry-wise, we're actually only one yard apart. The Pro V is only one yard more in carry. So that spin element is allowing that Pro V to just release and roll that little bit more. All in all, I think this is a half decent ball. I don't like how hard it is. I don't like how quickly it chews up, but actually the spin rates and things with a wedge and an iron, I can see massive value in the performance of that ball nearer to the green. Again, if you were getting fitted, get yourself fitted with this golf ball to make sure your driver's tuned into this the way this flies. You can get the spin off the driver if you've got a decent fitter slash coach or both. But the PXG ball will not kill the Pro V1. I'd be interested to see what my golf spies say about the PXG golf ball compared to the Pro V because they have a far more extensive look at the performance of it over a much bigger pool of data. This was my take on it. See you on the next video.